All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Brown, and I'm here with my company, Gear Commons, and we're taking the sharing economy outside. And so for any of you who are on social media this evening, you can use hashtag gear sharing if you like something that you hear. Cool. So for some people, you know, the adventure never stops. They find a way to get outside every single day of the year and you know are kind of just hardcore outdoor enthusiasts. For other people, however, they don't even know where to start. Sure, easy clear. They don't even know where to start because they don't have the right gear to even go out and enjoy the outdoors. And in fact, the Outdoor Industry Association has shown that a major barrier to participating in outdoor activities like hiking or mountain biking is just lacking access to the appropriate equipment. And so that's what we're trying to do, is connect people who own gear with people who need gear. And so this is an example of you know, somebody's gear room. We have you know, millions of people throughout this country uh, who have gear rooms like this that you know, for the most part, all this gear kind of goes unused. It's a $120 billion market in the United States, and yet a main barrier to participating in these activities is access to this gear. So we're basically providing a platform to connect the two. And we've seen this work in a bunch of different industries so far. In housing, you see companies like Airbnb that are in over 35,000 different cities. You've seen it in the vehicle market with companies like Lyft and Uber, and Zipcar, who was just acquired for $500 million. And now you can share everything from office space to money to designer dresses. Uh, we kind of found that we were users of a lot of these services, minus the dresses. Um, and so we, did, we found that there wasn't anything in the outdoor industry, which is something that we you know, kind of really cared about. And so we went out and started it. And so we built a website called Gear Commons that we actually launched in August 2013. And then we're coming up on our first summer season, so this is kind of our summer launch. And so meet Bryce, who lives in Cambridge, and she's put her you know, camping tent, up, two-person tent, up on Gear Commons for $15 a day, and you can go rent this from her and uh, pick it up in Cambridge. All the payments happen online, and then you can rate and review both the gear and the owner and the renter uh, as to whether your experience was good or not. It's kind of builds trust within the community. Was the gear of high quality? Was the owner or the renter responsive and a good communicator and made the gear available and brought it back in good condition? And so we've been lucky enough to come after a lot of these successful companies in different markets. And so this is an example of best practice in the sharing economy as a way to build trust within your community. So we have a uniquely qualified team to make this happen. This is our front end developer, James. Um, who's on his honeymoon right now, congratulations. Um, this is him on the summit of the largest mountain in Mexico, and, uh, and he's raised money for a previous tech startup um, as well. This is Joel, who's actually in the back. We're wearing like a matching flannel. Um, and so he's our back-end developer, and he's actually started a company that built its own custom animation platform. And this is him backpacking in, uh, in Northern India. And then this is me, my name is Mike. Um, you know, I'm a Mass Challenge alumni from 2000, 2010. I've won a 100K business plan competition, I've filed a couple patents, or own a couple patents, and I'm a successful crowdfunder. And I've written for one of the leading sharing economy magazines called Shareable. And this is me on top of the largest mountain in Maine uh, in February. And so we kind of like live this dream every day, so our founder market fit is very good. We're tech savvy, we're startup savvy, and we spend every waking moment trying to find out how to get outdoors. One minute. Thankfully, we've uh, pulled on an advisor who's a senior executive at Zipcar, longest tenured employee there. And so he was with them from when they were a small startup in Cambridge to a nationally recognized brand through an acquisition to Avis from Zipcar. So he's latched on to our company and has been a great advisor to help us kind of do the same thing. We've also got some great media coverage in Outside Magazine and Sports Illustrated and a bunch of other companies, um, except the Boston Tech startup scene. So if anybody here is writing for Boston Tech, um, you know, come talk to us. We'd love to get, get some coverage in the Boston scene. Oh, I can help with that. Very good. Um, so to kind of wrap up, we're at Gear Commons. We're taking the sharing economy outside. And if you guys, the biggest thing you can do to help us kind of launch in the summer 
is to go on Facebook and tell people about GearCommons.com. You can tag us at GearCommons and use hashtag GearShare. Share gear and get us out. Two questions. Two questions. Are we set up the next one? Oh yeah. Sure, we got you one here with the excellent glasses Wait. jacket combo. Hey. <laughs> um, when the um, Zipcar started, there are new cars that are owned by Zipcar, and it includes your insurance and gas, etc. Yes. Um, are you sure that you're not going to have some new gear yourselves to keep enough inventory to keep people? Yeah, we, we thought a lot about kind of like whether or not we should have our own gear or do the crowdsourcing model. And there are some companies that are doing exactly what you're talking about, buying up all of that gear. And there's one in Charlestown. We thought a lot about doing that and decided not to because it's significantly less scalable. I think we could do that in the future as maybe a test. But um, working with our advisor from Zipcar, he also kind of advised against that because there are very few barriers to growth if you continue in the peer-to-peer -peer space. Um, and a lot more barriers if you're going in and actually buying assets and, uh, and buying space, retail space. And at that point you become kind of a glorified gear shop. And people are kind of doing that already and they've done it for, you know, ever since the outdoor industry started, they've had kind of gear shops. Zipcar was kind of a new example of doing that. And so we're kind of taking uh, a business model into the outdoor industry, which is an industry who hasn't changed its business model ever. It's retailer driven and that's how it's always been. And we're the first to kind of change that around. Okay. Uh, questions? Another question? Okay. Right here, standing in the back. Yes, right, right here. Nope. Yeah. 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 Uh, how do you deal with the liability of Brown if the gear fails? Like if you rent it from a you know, rental company or something, I would imagine that they're responsible. Mm -hmm. uh, adventuring outdoors, rock climbing, things like that. It's like it's dangerous. Yeah, so, yeah, so um, you know, ad adventuring outside is... Oh, the, qu the question was, how do you deal with things like liability, with gear damage, and stuff like that? And so we found, we've surveyed thousands of people and all the people who have joined the site, and the number one thing that people are concerned about by a wide margin is, what happens if somebody kind of ruins my gear? What do you do then? So we looked at a bunch of different companies and a bunch of different retail shops and what they do, and they put uh, you know, a security deposit on your gear, which is how we currently do it for gear damage. And so if somebody comes back and has put a big hole in your tent or your kayak or whatever it happens to be, you know, we have their car on file and can charge a security deposit for the damaged gear. Cool, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you.